server and we manage it through a couple of these applications that I'm showing you now. One of them is the event manager and then the other one I'll show you is the event monitor. So the monitor I'll show you first really does show you what it's doing and what's being triggered, what's being sent, what's being received. If there's any pending emails that are going to be going out but haven't yet gone out, you'd see those here. Any emails that were sent today and so forth, sent yesterday, uh, and including any errors if there are any, maybe you had a bad email address or something like that. So this allows an administrator to see at a glance, is Knowledge Sync doing its thing? Is it running? Is it sending the emails? I think it should. So this is where you can come to monitor that. And more importantly, though, is the event manager. The event manager is where you manage the events. And events are uh, going to have a query that is, again, the filter that determines when an alert should go out. What are the conditions and what is the situation under which we want somebody to get an email? And then who should get the email and what should the email say? Those three ingredients make up an event. And here are some of them that are included with the free professional edition of Sales Logics. And again, these are all pretty good in my opinion. These are commonly usable. Uh, and so I, I'm glad they put these in here. The ones that have an asterisk are active. And you can also see that you can determine as the administrator how often does it check. Um, you don't want to overload your server by having Knowledge Sync constantly hammering on the database looking for a reason to send somebody an email. So you want to manage these appropriately to not overload that server. So I've got a couple of them activated here. If somebody gets a new activity assigned to them by somebody else, they're going to get an email to let them know. An opportunity that got lost today was closed out and lost is going to show up here. And then finally, if a support ticket gets assigned to a rep, uh, that's scheduled to run every minute. And so that's going to be one of the alerts, too. So you can activate any of these. And this isn't even actually the entire list. This is just kind of a sample of them. Now, the other kind of important thing here is the queries. So the events where we just started or just came from, these are the, the events. They're built upon the queries. And queries, these all come, again, standard in Knowledge Sync. These are all pre-built queries that Knowledge Sync created. You can modify these. And so let's just break one of these events apart if we could. So let's look at opportunity lost today. I double clicked on it, and I'll get back to the query. The opportunity lost today event is going to occur when this particular query is satisfied. So there is a query from the previous list called opportunities lost today, and it's a filter that looks at the closed or status field, rather, of an opportunity and the date. And if it goes, OK, well, today, one of them closed, and we lost it. It's now satisfied that query, and now it's going to send somebody an email. OK, who? Who's going to get the email? Well, that's what the Subscribers tab is for. This is where you add your SalesLogix users into these particular events. So in this particular one, I've got a user named CFX Demo, and he's the guy that's going to get an email. Well, what's he going to get? If you go to the Email tab, this is going to show you the actual body or contents of the email. And you also notice it has merge fields in it. Uh, so you're going to see data actually merged into the email. And it's based, again, upon looking at particular fields uh, and forms within the system. You can have a subject line. So we've got. The definition, the query it's built on, what the email is going to say, who's going to get it, and finally the schedule. How often should Knowledge Sync look through the database to try to make a decision that this alert needs to be triggered and that email needs to be sent? And then finally, under track, this shows you as an administrator a record of all the alerts that have already been generated. Uh, Knowledge Sync has its own database, and what it's doing is any time in this example an opportunity is lost and then the email alert went out, it records that in its database because it's done its job. We don't want it to keep sending the email out every minute. 
Although you can configure alerts to be persistent. So you can say, uh, maybe you have an urgent support ticket and every 30 minutes indefinitely send everybody emails until this thing gets closed. So you, you could certainly overdo it uh, if you want and the program can support that. In this example, we've told it once you've alerted, you're done and don't need to send this particular alert again. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we're going to show you subscribers down here, and you can see that they can be based on SalesLogic's uh, users. And again, I added myself, CFX Demo, to the system. And you can add groups of users or have groups of users. So here's all the users in my SalesLogic system. They're all eligible to be recipients of one of these email alerts, I guess is the point. OK, so let's go back to an event. And what you can see here is that I have the option to fire these right now, and I do this for testing. OK, so here we're going to get into the fun stuff. Here is my Outlook inbox. And here you can see I've already gotten several uh, email alerts from Knowledge Sync today. And Abbott Limited has a new ticket. So there's a couple of those. Here's an opportunity that was lost today that I'm being told about, another new ticket. And so let's go ahead and schedule an activity, for example. So let's go into Abbott Limited. And we're going to schedule an activity. We'll say we're going to have a meeting. And just pick anything. We're going to go to lunch, it's high priority. And it's going to be with John Abbott, the owner of the company. And I'm going to schedule it for Lee Hogan and link it to an opportunity in the system. And I'm going to save that. So I've scheduled just a plain old meeting in sales logic. So I've shifted in my user mode now. I'm no longer the administrator. I'm just a guy using my sales logics. So I went ahead and scheduled an activity. And of course, that activity is going to be sitting here on the uh, activity tab, as you would expect. And now I'm going to ask Knowledge Sync to tell me somebody did this to me. So if we go into the activity assignee alert and say schedule this thing now. I don't want to wait till 9 a.m., which is when it's scheduled to run. I want it to go right now. So that's what I did. So if we go over to the monitor, may have already sent it. And we'll go over here into Outlook, do a send and receive. Not yet. Of course, it worked before. Try this again. I did save my changes, didn't I? See if anything's pending. Oh, I do have some pending here. So it's got a bunch of alerts it's getting ready to send out. I don't know if I want to keep you waiting while this goes, but you will get the point that eventually, once it gets through all of the alerts, there we go. I was impatient. So here now is the email into my Outlook inbox from KnowledgeSync saying, hey, Mr. John Abbott, uh, you guys have a meeting scheduled. Uh, for such and such a date, and so that's what you see here. Just a great way to uh, be efficient with your sales logic. The final thing I'll show you is that you can also go into an event. Let's pick on activities again. So I tried to be, uh, I tried to focus on what I think is probably the most common use of it. The the most common thing it can do is send somebody an email. But what I wanted to mention, too, is that it can also uh, send an instant message. And there's so many people running around with smartphones today uh, that have instant messenger applications on them. Uh, so you can send an instant message rather than an email. You can also have it post to the webcaster site, which we're going to show you on a future demo. Uh, we can also have it send a fax and or be included in a report. So if you'd rather get a digest version uh, of the alerts, maybe daily or what have you, you can uh, set that up uh, in a report. 
So that's basically it. Uh, that's what I was hoping to show you today. Uh, kind of maybe take some of the mystery out of knowledge think and, and cut to the chase, the stuff that I think is important and common. Uh, it can do a lot more than I showed you today. I scratched the surface, but I really do think it's probably the most important parts of it and the real meat of the, of the software. So with that, uh, Brianna, do we have any questions coming up uh, from the demo today? Yep, uh, I have a couple for you. Um, sure. The first one that I have um, is about the event monitor grids and wondering if those are exportable. Uh, I would say, I, I don't know how to do it, I'll be honest, but I would say yes, you could export these out. The reason I'm answering it that way is that it's being driven from a database. So now let's think when you install it, it actually puts its own database in SQL, and it's in that database that it records all of these alerts and events and failures and successes. So my first response would be yes, but I'm not positive. Okay. And then another question is about um, the event schedule. And the question specifically is if you have a global user base, would the event be able to be scheduled only at the admin time zone, or can it be customized to send based on the user location? That is a great question. And it's based on an interval rather than a particular moment in time. You can set some thresholds and some ranges, so you can throw in some exceptions. But if you say it's to send it at 9 o'clock, uh, it's going to do that based on the time of the server, and it's going to run at the interval uh, based on that home time. So the long-winded answer to the question is, I don't think it has the ability to recognize time zones. Okay. and adjust the alert time as such. Again, I could be wrong on that one, and we'll get the answer. I'm not really that technical, so perhaps one of our developers knows how to do it, but I haven't seen that feature. Okay. Um, another question I have is, is there a list of events included in this version um, that's available in a document form? Yeah. Can they find, okay. Yeah, absolutely, and so what we can do Maybe Brianna is post um, a link to that website. And from that Sage Knowledge Sync website, you can download the software. You can install a trial version. You can install this professional version. You can download the event pack, which has got all the pre-built queries and alerts built in it. So you can see those. Uh, so absolutely all that information is available. And what do you think we should do? Maybe put that on our website, a yeah, blog post or something? Yep, let's put that up on the website. Um, okay. So if anybody is interested in that, we'll have that up there in the next day. Just um, come take a look at customerfx.com, and you should be able to find a link to that. You can also um, reply to your email that you were sent for this demo to me, and I can send you a link to that as well. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. In case you have trouble finding it on the website or something. Um, we do have a couple more questions here. Um, can you send text messages? Uh, can, like, I, I, I'm thinking, can you receive an alert via text message on your on your phone? On a cell phone, a cell phone text message, yeah. like an SMS message. Yes. Yeah. I I have not seen that feature either. Um, I know it can do an instant message, and my I phone has an instant messenger application uh, called Beehive or something weird like that, but I'm not sure again about the SMS message, what I think is what they might be asking when they say a text message. Yes, I believe that's what that means as well. Okay, um, let's see our next one. I have a question, and this kind of this is going to pertain to using it with Mass 500. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this, Scott, but we'll give it a shot. Um, we currently use Knowledge Sync with Mass 500. Do we just need a key in order to utilize it with our SalesLogix database as well? Well, there are several versions of Sage Knowledge Sync, mm -hmm. and depending on which version you're using with 500. Some of the versions allow for multiple database connections. So that's really what you're getting into here is you'd have to have a version of it 
that allows for multiple database connections. And if you do have that, you can download, and I don't even think it would cost you anything. I think you can just go ahead and download the alert pack for sales logics and have those alerts fire and load it into the same instance of Knowledge Sync that you're using for Mass. Uh, it is the same product. It's it's Knowledge Sync. It's just a different database connection for 500 and a different set of alerts. So that would be my answer to the question. We'd have to know if your version allows multiple database connections. Because some versions do not. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we have. Um, so, Scott, I don't think... You have anything else to add? Nope, I think that's it. Thanks everyone for attending today. We appreciate it. Yep, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.